Hi, how's everybody doing, kids? Today we're going to do a watercolor for kids spring painting. And you'll need a paper. If you have a heavy construction paper, that's great, but I'm using just a printer paper. And you'll need your paints. I'm still using the same paints that I'm borrowing from Meadow, my granddaughter. And one of the other classes that I gave you, I showed you how to, and I'll do it this way so it matches, how to make tests of each of the colors and to keep it close so you can see what each of them do. I have two rows and two rows of colors that they match with. So it's just kind of nice to keep this with it. You could uh, tape it on the bag or like, some way that you can still look at it or just keep it like this. Maybe put a rubber band around it if you wanted to. So the other thing that you need is something round because we're going to trace it. And I have what's considered like a dinner, maybe a, a salad plate or a roll plate or dessert. You know, it's not the great big ones that everybody has in their house. It's the one that's smaller. And sometimes you might have paper plates that are a little smaller. The main thing is you want it to be able to fit inside your paper. So however you can do that, that's how you want to do it. I think I'm going to put it right around there. And then I have my watercolor brushes and then paper towel and some water. I actually have two waters in case I need one, one more than I don't have to get up. It's nice to have everything you need, right? I have paper towel and I have two crayons. I have a white one and I have kind of a peachy orangey one, okay? So I'm gonna take the peach one and once I've decided where to put the plate to trace, I could put it kind of in the middle. I could put it close to the bottom. I could do it hanging off. I think I'm gonna do it towards the top, inside, a, around the same amount inside from each place. And then I'm gonna hold it down. If you're right-handed, hold it with your left. And if you're left-handed, Hold it with your right, okay? So I'm gonna hold it down so that it doesn't move when I do this. So there you go. There's my circle. And I'm already done with the plate. I don't have to use it again. So I'm gonna put it away and I'm putting away my orange. Hey, look, I got my pajamas on. I'm painting kind of early in the morning and it's such a pretty day. I thought I would paint something that feels very spring. Okay, so you ready? So we're gonna take some spring colors and you can draw them first if you want with a pencil or with a crayon or you can just paint them. I'm gonna just paint them. I'm gonna do a center and I'm gonna make all my flowers have a yellow center, a little yellow center. I don't wanna go around the edge just yet. So I'm gonna go yellow, 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 yellow. Do you hear that? I better get breakfast soon. My stomach just growled. <laughs> yellow and yellow. And some of my yellow started getting different shapes and some were lighter and darker. But do you notice something? I only dipped my brush in the water one time got a little bit in the yellow. I didn't make it super wet and I didn't go back and forth in the water. That's the main thing you wanna remember. I'm rinsing it. Now I'm gonna take my white crayon, which is 
kind of like my magic crayon because you can't see it at first. And I'm going to do this. Let me show you. Let me find something so I can show you. I'm going to do... This, like say here's the circle, right? I'm going to do this all the way around it. Okay? But I'm going to do it with my white crayon so I can't see it. I just have to try it anyway. So here I go. I'm going to go right on the base of it. Here's my side look. And I'm gonna start somewhere like in the middle, and that will remind me. And I'm gonna press down, not too hard. I don't wanna break the crayon, but I wanna do it hard enough. I'm gonna move the paper. I'm gonna do it hard enough that I know it's working. I'm just moving my paper each time and trying to remember where I am. This is a tricky part because it's invisible. You're writing with invisible ink, right? Because you've got a white crayon on a white, you know how I can tell how far I went? I can kind of feel it a little bit. So I'm going all the way around. All the way around, little circle scribbles. You can do them, oops. I'm always dropping brushes when I'm teaching you guys. <laughs> you can do them, little scribbles or careful scribbles. There you go. So I'm gonna go around one more time. And I'm doing that kind of fast because this way, if you want to, you can hit pause and take your time. But this way, I won't make it too long. I'm trying not to go over my orange line, but sometimes I am a little bit, and that's okay too. So I'm done with my crayon for that. And I'm going to save it because I may want to do one more thing with it. I used a lot of it. My tip was pointed when I started. All right, now that gave my yellow little dots time to dry. So now I'm going to go in and I'm going to make them have different shapes at the top, at the daisies. So I'm going to start with pink right here. I'm putting my... Let me put this in the picture so you can see it in the camera. I'm dipping in my brush, tapping off the extra, going to my pink, and then I'm not going to go in that water again. So there's my pink, and I'm going to do two strokes. Ready? One, two. That's my petal. One, two. I'm going to keep moving my paper around. And some will be longer and some will be shorter. So that's my first daisy. Some of them have some of the white of the paper showing. And some of them go into the yellow. They're all, this one's fatter, this one's longer. And that is the way I want it. I want it to look like a variety. Do you know what variety is? I want it to have just kind of a pretty look that you never know. I still haven't gone back into the water. And now I'm going to do this one. Two strokes, moving my paper. Two strokes. Going all the way around. And I can have as many petals as I want. And some of them can overlap if they want to. <clears throat> so 
So I'm going to do one more pink. Still not getting more water, just getting more paint. And I'm gonna do it here. Now I need more water. How do I know? Because it's getting almost dry. We'll see if I can go through this one without needing water, but usually when it starts getting dry, that's when I go in water and not before. Made it. You needed to get more water and more paint, it's okay. But I just wanna get you out of the habit of using so much water all the time that you don't get the brightest colors you can get. Now I'm gonna rinse it. And I can pick any color I want, and I'm gonna pick orange. So I got one, I dipped it in the water, and I got one bit of water on here. And now I'm going around again. And I'm moving my paper so that I don't have to move my hand and make it feel awkward. You know what I mean? Instead of painting like this, I can just move it around. Now, some of these, I don't think I'll do it on this one, but some of them, I'm not gonna do all the petals. I'm gonna make it look like it's facing a different way. And in fact, let's do it on this one. So I'm gonna do petal, petal, I'm doing them backwards. And then I'm going to leave it just like that. So it kind of looks, I'll make it a little longer. Kind of looks like it's facing that way. But I want it to look, you know, if you had little baby daisies, just the flowers, you know, the kind that grow in the field, they're real little. If you had them in your hand and you dropped them, and some would land different ways, that's the way I want to do this. So now I'm gonna switch. I did two oranges and now I'm going to go to, ooh, so many decisions. Um, I guess I'll go, I don't have a good green that would be good for flowers. So I guess I'll go to purple. So I dipped my brush in water. And I'm gonna go. Two strokes, you remember, right? Two strokes. One, two. Don't you love spring when all the flowers start coming out? See that one I did short on one side so that it looked like it was kind of leaning. I like that look. And I'm gonna kind of go around to make it look a little different there for fun. Now I'm gonna go get some more purple. If you need water, go ahead and get a tiny bit, but not too much, okay? Sound good? Purple, purple. I'm gonna leave the last one is gonna be purple and it's gonna be facing a different way. You'll notice I started getting into this flower. I kind of overlapped and that's fine too. That kind of looks pretty. So I'm gonna do this flower like this. I'm gonna turn my paper, one, two. I'm gonna get a tiny bit more water. This purple paint dries up faster than the others. Ooh, that's a dark purple. That's okay. I kind of like variety. I like a variety in people and I like a variety in colors. If you have some friends with beautiful red hair, some with straight hair and curly hair, it's just so nice, isn't it? All right, we're gonna let those flowers kind of dry. And then we're going to find out what the surprise is down here. 
I'm taking a little bigger brush. If you only have one size, use the one size. And I'm gonna go with a blue color. And I have two blues. I have a, a kind of like um, a sky blue, I guess, and a turquoise blue like some birds are. I guess I'm gonna go with this blue. And here's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to go around the circle. Just go around the circle and bring out the surprise. I'm just moving my brush around the edge of the circle. And remember all those squiggly marks you made? They're showing up. Isn't that fun? Do you know why they're showing up? It's because they're waxy, crayons are waxy, and water can't settle into waxy. I'm going through more paint, and I'm going to kind of blend it out as I go. Although I like variety, so some is more dark and some is more light. I'm going to connect it with this side while I'm at it. And just keep one side around the circle. It's kind of pretty, isn't it? It's magical. It's special because of the design that's coming through, isn't it? Now you have a choice. You can make, let's see which we like the best. We have this way, this way, this way. And the way I painted it was this way. I don't know which one I like the best. Now I'm going to do some hearts. Let me show you how to make hearts. Here's another little piece to practice on. So, so when you, I'm gonna show you first by drawing it with a pen. When you do hearts, a lot of people go like this and that's fine. What I like to do when I paint is I do one side first and paint it all and one side second. And then I feel like it makes them a little easier. So with my crayon, I'm doing one side first and one side second, and I'm trying to remember where I put it. And I'm gonna do some little ones too. And I might do some up here. Do you know what X and O mean? It means kiss and hug. Those would be cute in here too, if you wanted to. So let's see what we got with our hearts. I think I'm going to do a little bit of red, just a little bit. I'm going to take my bigger brush, make sure I cleaned off the blue, unless I want to mix. And I'm going to try to find, there it is. Here's a baby one. And there is, where is the other one? There it is. So what I'm gonna do is take my red and do it kind of watery. There's the bigger one. I might like the smaller one even better. Now, before I paint the rest, if I want, I could do some more little baby ones. just because I like them so much. So I'm going up to the edge and I'm just filling it in. Now, if you want to be done without these, you may. If you don't want to keep going, it's fine with me, you may. This is your painting, so you can stop whenever you want. But for those that want to keep going, 
maybe the bigger kids. I'm going to show you how to keep going and what to do. And find all the secret little hearts. And that's kind of fun too. Now you'll see that I go, I'm doing it light red. I'm not doing it real dark. And if you scrub a lot on paper like this, you can start tearing it. And so be gentle, okay? I'm going right up to where I painted my flowers. I'm not going all the way into it, but I'm going right up to it and just kind of tapping on it. See that? I'm going up to the blue. And this might be for the bigger kids. You see what you wanna do. Or you can try it a couple different ways. Do another one without the secret hearts. Oh, found another heart. I forgot about that one. I'm keeping it real light and watery so I don't take all of my pretty flowers away. You notice I'm just going up to them and then I'm leaving them. I'm not going all over them and I'm not, I'm not letting myself scrub too much. So there you go. Now, if you want to, you can let it dry and you can cut it out and turn it into a little present for somebody that you take, that you love. Or you could turn it into a little card or you can hang it up just the way it is. Or you could ask somebody to write something on the bottom or you write something in the bottom. But right now, it's pretty wet, so we're going to try to let it dry and not do too much more. When it, when it dries, it'll look a little bit different, okay? So there is the pretty, very wet. There's the back side. See how wet it is? There's my pretty spring design. And when it dries, I'll tell you another secret. You can paint on top of it when it dries. If you wanna go back in, I'm gonna put a little bit right in there. If you wanna go back in, let's pretend it's dry, okay? And you decide to add a few more flowers. It's not dry, so it's not a good time to do it now. But if I wanted to, I could go in and add some new bright flowers just to show you. I was supposed to put the yellow in first, remember? I was giving you an example and then I forgot the order. But if I wanted to, I could add some more on top of it. But you do want it to wait till it's dry because see what's happening here? It blurs out. So I hope that was fun for you and it gives you ideas of how to do some fun things to make little surprises appear. Have a good day. Bye-bye.